Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell here, of course, and we're pleased to be joined by Dalton Kellett, the driver of the number four Chevrolet for AJ Foyt Racing in the NTT Data IndyCar Series. Uh, Dalton, how are you, bud? Good, Casey. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's a nice, sunny, warm day in Indy here. First time we can say that for a while, so it's all good. <laughs> So, you know, I know you ran part-time for uh, the Foyt team last year, but this year uh, was full-time. A lot of people were wondering what was going to happen with, with the Foyt team this year. Were you surprised that you, – was this the original plan that you were going to get a full-time ride this year with, uh, with the team? You know, we didn't go into last season sort of with the intention of doing it – or not with the intention of but with the, the – like, what am I trying to say? Last year's uh, – deal on the 14 car and the 41 car was was that that, that was the entire deal uh but throughout the last season we were in talks pretty early with larry and the, the Foyt team uh to be back full-time next year so it wasn't really a, a surprise for me to, to when we made the announcement you know that, that that was kind of what we had been talking about and working towards for most of the year uh, but we just really hadn't kind of put it out there so i think that's was part of why there was a lot of that speculation as to what's what's going on right yeah so now that you are running full-time in IndyCar I know that you know so I mean you ran in you ran in Indy Lights you've kind of climbed your way up the ladder um what what's it been like to now know that you're going to be running a full-time season with this team it's great you know I think having that full-time deal is you know it really solidifies the whole program right it was it was and it was great last year having you know Tony and Seb having those really experienced teammates to learn from, but it's, it's more helpful if they're your teammates as opposed to jumping in and out of the same car. Right. And that's more from the operation side, like for the team, just, it makes everything a lot smoother when you have one guy per car. Um, but for, 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 for me personally, you know, it's way more track time, more testing and it just, you know, it, it kind of solidifies the whole thing. So I'm really excited for the year. So, you know, I know that the season was, you know, supposed to start sometime this month, but of course, St. Pete got moved back a little bit because, you know, maybe they want to have more fans, which it looks like. Uh, it's, we're, we're, we're hoping to see you guys out there. Yeah, we're, we're excited. Yeah, of course, um, Barber's going first this year uh, down, in, uh, down in Alabama. So going to Barber, which, uh, which I, I'm not, it, which is an interesting track as, as it is, you know, road court. What, what's it like going to Barber? And I'm, I, I think you've ran that course before. Yeah. Indy Lights. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. The the best way I can describe it is it's 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 a roller coaster. You know, the lots of elevation change, really smooth, fast track. So it's, you know, it's almost the opposite of St. Pete, right? St. Pete's short and intense and bumpy, and you know, Barber is while it's still very intense, it's it's really smooth, really fast. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously a, a dedicated road course. So the, the, the car setups are different. The driving kind of styles a bit different the way you kind of attack the corners and a, a, approach the, you know, the, 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 the lap is different, but personally, it's one of my favorite tracks to drive. Um, you know, just, it, I, I kind of put it in, in a similar category as, uh, as Laguna Seca, where it's, you know, one of those really flowing, short, fast, intense tracks, uh, but it, it can't be hard to pass. So, you, you know, qualifying is going to be super important there. So, you know, when you look at these street courses that a lot of tracks that you haven't been to, you haven't been to Long Beach, you hadn't been to Detroit, um, you've been to Toronto. Yeah. So, you know, what's the difference? Kind of explain for, for people that don't know the differences between road course and street courses. So a road course, when we, we typically say a road course, that's, you know, your permanent racetrack that's you know it's paved it, it, it exists full-time it's a dedicated facility whereas a, a street circuit a, a street course is literally we're racing on roads that have been temporarily blocked off for the race event and the basically it goes from you know the road that you drive your car on and they, they basically just put concrete blocks with catch fencing to line uh, line the road to kind of mark out the racetrack and you know the the, the big difference um, in terms of the tracks themselves is that, you know, a, a de dedicated racetrack, except somewhere like Sebring, which is known for being super bumpy, most dedicated tracks are relatively smooth, relatively consistent pavement that you're driving on, whereas a street circuit, I mean, you drive down any street in any city in, in North America and you'll see, a, a, you'll see asphalt pavement, curbs, bumps, crowns in, in the roads, cracks, patches. 
And that's where the real challenge is, is that you have to, you know, especially like somewhere where, where somewhere like Toronto, where you have patches at the apexes of, of a lot of corners, you're setting up your car to kind of deal with that. And also changing your driving style because you're dealing with different grip levels throughout, throughout the corner. So it, it really makes it challenging, but it's super fun. I've, I've always loved street circuits. Um, so since I, since I'm from the Michigan area and that's where I'm currently based, <laughs> uh, Detroit is coming up this, this year. Of course, it's yeah. uh, one of the very few, one of the, I think one of two double headers, of course, for a while, oh, it's only been the double header. Of course, they yeah. also wanted Texas as well, but going to Detroit, you know, I, I, I don't know how much you know about Belle Isle, but What's it going to be like to, you know, to go there and, and run there? And because a lot of drivers love that place. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never raced there. I had the opportunity a few years back when I was in, it might have been my first year in lights. So like 2017 or something like that, maybe 2016. Um, I had, I had the chance to actually go and do, the, I, I was driving the pace cars with, with the IndyCar uh, 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 two-seater experience, but the, it was, at the time it was the Chevy Impala pace car that uh, me, me and a few other of the junior guys were driving, like doing the the ride along. So I've I've, I've been around the, the track or 80% of the track because you kind of pit out and pit in. You never really do a full lap doing that. So I, I, I've never gone through the last couple corners, <laughs> um, but n- never driven there in an open wheel car and then, uh, never raced there. So it'll I'll, I'll, I'll approach it like you'd approach any other track you've never been to where, you know, you're going to, look at onboard video beforehand get the you know get the lay of the land got my simulator right beside me here my little home home sim set up so i'll be hopping on the on 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 the sim the camera um you know to get some experience with that and with with the vr you can get a really good 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 feel of what the track actually looks like you know i i racing does a great great job modeling those places so i'll know you know the, the general lay of the land but obviously it'll be you know, just trying to learn as much as I can, as, as, as quick as I can when I get to the race weekend. Yeah. So what, what kind of like, what track are you most looking forward to when we get to the season? Is it the ovals, the road courses, the street courses? Do you have anyone in particular? Uh, I mean, Indy, you know, I, I'm super excited to get back for Indy. And, you know, last year uh, the race didn't go the way that we wanted, but I think our, our, our pace qualifying and, where the team was at, we were all pretty happy. So looking forward to kind of build on that and move a bit further up, up the grid. And that's just a, an amazing event that, that whole month. Uh, from the road course side, actually, I'm really looking forward to Barber. Um, I, I love racing there. So I think it's kind of, it could be, it'll be unique that we're starting the season there. And uh, provided everything goes off as planned, uh, my hometown race, the Toronto Indy, that's a, you know, a, a big one for us. and. I'm, you know, fingers crossed that we'll be going there and looking forward to that one for sure. Sure. Um, of course, you've driven. Let's let's get into Toronto a little bit, but because, of course, you've driven there before yep. um, when you were in Indy Lights and obviously in the past as well. But you know, going to Toronto, what what is that race weekend like? You know, for you, as it's super- from Canada. Yeah, it's it's super busy. You know, it's it's the, the one where I probably get the most media attention. You know, doing like morning like morning TV and radio and all that. And you know, it's a great story for the local media. Kind of a you know local drivers. You know, have myself and Hinchcliffe there. So, you know, they definitely like to catch up on us and hear what's going on when we when we when we, when we make that stop. And um, it is you know from a personal side, it's great because all all my friends and family are mostly in the area. But it is kind of kind of funny as you know like people want to hang out but you're like well i've got stuff to do on the weekend so <laughs> a little busy um but yeah it's it's great to go back home and and experience that it's you know i don't know if, if you've ever, ever been but toronto's an awesome city it's got a great you know very very multicultural so you get lots of like food you know great food and all that and lots to do in the city so really looking forward to being back there so you know this seat now uh, you know this is a this is a season where you know you didn't get a lot of practice last year you didn't get a lot of practice time you didn't get do the things that you wanted to do but this year for the Foyt team what's do you feel like you guys have really improved as a team overall because you know it, it's quite obvious we you know the struggles that you guys have had the last few years do you think that what what's what's it going to be like this year uh, heading into 2021 for the Foyt team yeah so I think the you know the, the first part of that I think I am you know I think myself and everyone we're over pretty enthusiastic and energized with what's going on 
um, everything from bringing Seb on to you know me being, being full time on 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 the four car, and you know we've got some great experience experienced guys that have come on on the engineering side. Uh, so the whole organization, I think, is really you know it's just everything's clicking really well. Um, so I you know I think we'll be better from a technical standpoint. I think with a you know some tracks that I'm coming back to, and then just with more seat time, I'll be better. I'll I'll I'm I'm you know in our off season test, and I've, I felt a lot more on top of the car and kind of ready to go. So I think everything is going to be just, you know, a little bit better. And I think that's kind of how, 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 how you make progress in, in this sport. You know, it's not like, well, there's not one key, you know, secret bearing or secret damper or, or, or whatever. It's like everything has to be 10, has to be 10% better consistently. And I think that's how we're approaching it. And it's, it's been paying off so far in testing. Yeah. Um, more test sessions. What, what's a, what do you, what's your schedule like before the when we get to Barber in April? Do you guys. Have uh, so that? we, yeah, we 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 just came from Barber. We were testing there last week for a day on on. It was supposed to be Monday, but it was weather, so we moved it to Tuesday. And uh, we're going to Texas later in later in March. Uh, we've got a couple of simulator days coming up. Um, the DIL with with Chevy. So I don't, I don't know if, if you talked about it before, but Chevy and Honda each kind of have their own simulator program. So Chevy ones down in Charlotte, the uh, Honda ones over in in Brownsburg, in Indiana, close to Indy. So we heading down to Charlotte for some sim testing. Uh, teams got lots of technical work. They've they, they're catching up on and getting everything ready so we're all keeping busy and then i think there's an i think we're testing at indy uh before barber actually on the oval they're, they're doing an open test sometime in april second week i think all right yeah. well, Dan, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us um greatly appreciate it and good luck to you this season and good luck at barber thanks casey thanks for having me on and uh yeah we'll have to catch up again sometime <laughs>